Hello and welcome to this episode of What Does This Package Do? I'm your host, Nafiel, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Context Lib Package. The Context Lib Package deals with context managers. What are context managers, you ask? Well, whenever you use the with statement, for example, here when we're trying to open a file, we're using a context manager. Context managers in general deal with all the cleanup that you need to do when opening resources such as files. In this case, we are going to have our file automatically closed for us when we exit the with statement. All right, so with that quick intro out of the way, let's dive in. The first thing we're going to look at is the context manager decorator. What this wonderful little decorator does is that it turns your generator into a context manager. What this timer context manager is going to do is tell us how long a bunch of statements took to execute that was within the with statement. So now that we have the start of the time, we're going to yield our generator, which will allow the code inside of the context manager to run. Once the yield is over and we yield back to the context manager, we can then print something out. In this case, we're going to print out how long it took in terms of seconds. The great thing about daytime objects is that you can add and subtract with them. So we're going to take daytime.now and subtract the start, and we're going to get the length of how long this took to run. And we can do that by calling the seconds property on the resulting object. And to test out this nifty little context manager, what we're going to do is create another function and we're going to use this context manager with the with statement to see if it functions. And of course, we're going to use good old time.sleep in order to see if our context manager is accurate. We're going to make sure that our file is correctly formatted and then we're just going to run this thing. One quick little thing to mention is that it doesn't really take two seconds in this video. That's because we've sped up this part so that it makes watching easier. And now running this again to make sure that everything works with the changed message. Okay, so that works. But what if we wanted to create the very same context manager, but using a class instead? So when it comes to creating context managers using classes, what you need to do is override the dunder enter method as well as the dunder exit method. And in this case, in the dunder enter method, we're going to attach the start variable to the class itself, which we are going to reference in the dunder exit method. In practice, both the function and this class do the same thing. Now, to be clear, you don't have to give it a dunder init method. I just do this out of habit. Just a quick note here, if you hit tab for code completion inside of a string, PyCharm would automatically turn that string into an F string. So now all that's left to do is change the context manager from what it was before to the new class context manager and run the same program again. And once we do that, it's easy to see that the same thing happens. Now at this point in time, you might be thinking, well, instead of a context manager, maybe I could have used a decorator. And the fact of the matter is, you can indeed use a decorator instead. And with this particular class, and by our class inheriting from this particular class, you can turn a context manager into a decorator, and you can use it as either a context manager or a decorator. And this is one of the reasons I absolutely adore context decorator. It's probably my favorite class in this entire library. Let's just unindent that statement and run this thing. So no surprises there, but it's pretty cool that you can use a context manager as a decorator as well. Now, if you wanted to use a lot of context managers at once, for example, you want to open a bunch of files, it's not always easy to do that with the with statement because you can have a lot of indents. To solve this, we have something called the exit stack. And what the exit stack does is that it allows you to open up a lot of context managers at once using the enter context method. All you need to do in order to use the enter context method is to pass in a context manager, and then you're good to go. Now, I have a confession to make. I don't have an a, b, or c.py in my directory. So if we run this, we're going to get a file not found error. Luckily, we have another context manager that we can use from context lib to suppress any exceptions. In this case, we're going to suppress the file not found error. Now, if we were to run this, nothing would actually happen because the files are not going to get created. We would need to open the file in write mode for them to be created. But if you want to get rid of any errors that are pesky, you can use suppress. 
Suppress is also an alternative to using a try except and then passing that exception. Okay, so now that our short detour with suppress is over, let's head back to talking about exit stack. Now, exit stack allows you to also apply context managers conditionally. I know that this can also be done with with statements, but this allows you to apply context managers under conditions without having to continuously indent your statements. Now, one of the first context managers that I ever built for myself was a context manager that turned my console output into a certain color. In this case, we're going to turn our console output into blue. If you were always curious about how packages like Colorama turn their console output into a different color, this is how they do it. They first print a certain symbol that changes the console output, and then they print another symbol to turn it back to normal. Now you have to be precise about the symbols, otherwise it's not going to work and you're just going to get some random stuff printed out to your terminal. Once we fix that, you'll notice that our console output is now blue. Now, if we didn't want to combine a decorator with a context manager, the alternative is to use the exit stack. Before we use the exit stack, we have to get rid of the current decorator as well as the context manager. With the exit stack set up, all we need to do is add our two context managers into it using the enter context method. Now, the order in which you enter context managers into the stack matters, which we will see a little later. Now, if we go ahead and run this, that seems to work. Now, if we want all the output to be blue, all we have to do is change the line at which we introduce print blue, and there we go. Now, the great thing about using exit stack is that you can also apply context managers conditionally. In this case, if we have a certain amount of time that we're going to sleep for, we can introduce a different context manager depending on the time that we want to sleep. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we're going to see that nothing is going to be printed out in blue because we're not sleeping for longer than two seconds. But now, if we were to change this to sleeping for four seconds, you'll see that everything outputted to the console is printed in blue. Now, a lot of the time, under certain conditions, you want your output to be redirected to a file, maybe a log file of sorts. This can easily be done using redirect underscore std out, which is another context manager from contextlib. So now if we go ahead and run this, what we're going to see is long underscore time dot txt has all the printed output. Well, folks, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I know that I haven't covered any of the async stuff. So if you want me to cover that in a later video, let me know.